Uh, the the uh... T tell us what what kinds of uh, experiments uh, are you doing once you got the panel up uh, what kinds of uh, other activities are are you doing is is it mostly just maintaining uh, the craft uh, or uh, are, are there certain experiments or uh, projects that you're engaged in as well well sir we have uh experiments already up here that we've been doing for many years and we'll be able to double that with the addition of the solar array that our shuttle friends brought up. We do a lot of experiments on combustion, understanding materials, understanding how, you know, we're guinea pigs, so understanding how people's bodies change in space and all this is in preparation for long duration missions to Moon and Mars. And the exciting thing about doing science up here is we really don't know what we don't know and that gives you the greatest potential for learning. And we've had a lot of cases where people have set up experiments and we've conducted them here on the space station only to find out that we've learned something new, something more uh, about the fundamentals of, this, of the uh, processes and the, the um, science. So it's a really great place to learn a lot. Outstanding. Uh, any of the young people have another question? This young man right here? Hold on one second. Have you found any life forms or any plants out in space? It's a good question. Any uh, any life forms out there other than you guys? We actually did an experiment on this mission uh, to take a swab or a sample of the surface of the EVA, the spacewalkers' gloves, both before and after the spacewalk. And that's a, that was sort of a demonstration of the type of technology that we'll be able to use on the moon and Mars. Uh, for the same purpose, to try and see if we can determine what sort of bacteria or microorganisms are living uh, in the various environments we're going to encounter. We unfortunately haven't really found anything here. I think we'll have much more uh, success at finding new types of life and different structures when we go to places like Moon and Mars and Moons of Titan and these other types of uh, environments. Excellent question. All right. Uh, we've got a young man back here. What things did you have to study to be an astronaut? All right, that's a good question. You guys are all extraordinarily trained. What uh, if, if we've got some budding astronauts uh, over here, what uh, what should they be doing? I'm assuming they better uh, hit the books on science and math. Uh, that's uh, you got it just right. The uh, one of the beautiful things about uh, getting to work here is uh, you can study uh, just about anything that uh, that you're really interested in. Uh, science and math being a big part of it, but we have uh, uh, medical doctors, uh, geologists, uh, engineers, and, uh, and a physicist in the group here with us. Um, so it's uh, pretty much anything in the math and science field. Uh, we've got a couple of school teachers here with us, um, so uh, studying education as well as uh, the math and science. But there really is uh, room up here for uh, for everybody. The uh, important part, though, is to uh, work really hard and uh, and do well in school. It uh, it'll make a difference in your future. And, and what about uh, what about fitness requirements these days? Uh, you know, some of us remember watching uh, the right stuff where. Oh, that's pretty impressive. Uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, the, well, Mr. President, is, is there uh, Mr. a particular are still, uh... Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Mr. President, the, uh, the fitness requirements are still uh, still there. Matter of fact, uh, the International Space Station just recently incorporated a new uh, fitness machine. Uh, it's like it's a very very fancy. Uh, workout machine you see in a, in a gym, but it's called the A-RED, and we can do a lot of uh, good exercise on it, uh, leg exercise, strength uh, training for your legs as well as your upper body. So it's, uh, particularly for the long-duration folks, it's uh, very important to maintain uh, uh, your muscles in good tone and uh, help you readapt when you get back on planet Earth. Excellent. Okay, there's a young lady back here who had a question. Um, when you say you exercise, what do you do? Well, we have a couple of different uh, exercise machines up here on the space shuttle we brought up. A, it looks like a like a bicycle that you would find in a gymnasium, so we can use that. 
and they have one here on the space station. And the other machine, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can uh, do squats. Uh, you can do curls. So we have a lot we can do. We also have a treadmill, so you can go ahead and run up here in space. Any, this, okay, we've got uh, another question from a young man. Hold on. Do you know how many stars there are in, in the space? Asking how many stars in space. I'll be interested in hearing the answer to this one. Well, uh, aboard the International Space Station, we can look down and see our beautiful planet Earth, and we can also look up and see the rest of the cosmos. And we can see that there are so many stars out there that it's very hard to count them all. And we can see that our Earth is a very small, very small planet in such a big universe. And it's just really amazing because it gives us a, a, a deep perspective of that we have to really take good care of our own planet. And that our own planet is just a, is a small place and we have the whole rest of the universe to work together in an, in an international sense and go, go explore this whole universe that's in front of us and all the discoveries that we'll make together. So maybe we'll someday be able to count how many stars that we have because we've, we're starting to go to the go to the stars as human beings together. And uh, that's what's really exciting about serving aboard the International Space Station and flying up and down on space shuttles is that we're, we're part of that great adventure. And we need you kids to study hard because uh, we, we can't do it all by ourselves. We really need you guys to, to work hard and, uh, and do whatever you're supposed to do and do it well, uh, like Tony said, because uh, there's a whole, whole universe in front of us. I had I had a quick question. The, uh, does uh, weightlessness uh, have an impact in terms of uh, your ability to to sleep? Sir, we just arrived here uh, just a few days ago, and uh, it's taken a while getting used to. Uh, for me personally, uh, missing a pillow. Uh, you're used to laying down on a mattress and having a place to rest your head, and uh, so it's it's taken uh, taken a while to get used to that. Well, the uh, I know uh, the kids got a chance to ask some questions. I want to make sure that uh, if there are any members of Congress who've got uh, some questions that they're interested in, that they've got a chance to. Okay, hold on. This is uh, K. Bailey Hutchinson from Texas. I understand that you are doing uh, experiments on salmonella and watching those organisms and how they react and grow, and we've had some salmonella problems here on Earth. Uh, what do you think you will be able to learn from the, the uh, environment in space that maybe you couldn't learn here on Earth? actually going to have a bit of a hard time answering that question. We do indeed have a, a, an experiment called the National Laboratory Program Vaccine Experiment in which salmonella, um, are, uh, in which certain microorganisms are exposed to salmonella. My job as an astronaut was basically to turn the crank and activate the experiment, and then after about four or five days, uh, turn the crank again and deactivate it. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the scientists are going to do with the data back at home or with the samples. We are returning, however, eight big vials of samples of these uh, of these cultures cultures with microorganisms and salmonella, and let the scientists go to work.